Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Ted, and today I'm hanging out with... Eric Stave. Eric is Ryan. And today we're talking the three most broken Dungeons & Dragons combos. Hey guys, jump down in the description below where you can find Nerdarchy the newsletter. Gain weekly tips as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. Broken combinations, huh? Most broken combinations. So, 5th edition has done really well about trying to limit the things that stack upon each other. And I, I think there's only a few things that we've encountered that we feel is kind of messed up or broken. You have to work really hard to break the game if you're going to try to do that. And rest <laughs> assured, players who want to break the game will find a way to break the game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just going to happen. There's going to be combinations they didn't think of. You can't play test for everything. Correct. You can try. I mean, you saw you saw on Heather's game with your character eyes, mm -hmm. you, you kind of broke it in the sense that you're not going to be, no one's going to ever sneak up on you, and you're never going to be false acceptable to traps. So, like, I, I designed him to really be able to notice notice things. He took the observant feat because he was human, so he had that at, at first level. It really fit with, with his story. Campaign started at a, at a higher level. He was a, a combination of ranger and rogue because he was designed as he's a hunter, he's on a revenge mission. But the things that really worked well for him, he had a decent wisdom score. I used my roguish expertise because there's no limitations on what you use those for, for expertise on perception and investigate. You link that with observant and those things become ridiculous. By the time this character was done, he had a passive perception of 30. Highest number in the game by, by you know, by raw. And it's like, yeah, I saw that. There is nothing that could sneak up on it. Yeah. <laughs> Dave and I had conversations about this, you know, off air numerous times about, well, there's a number of things that this DM could have done to give you negatives to that situation. But, but no then it becomes a about. 25 if you're <laughs> just using the passive disadvantage mm -hmm. mechanic. It's a negative five. So a 25 is still pretty damn flipping good. <laughs> So. You could maybe get it down to a 15, like with dim lighting, moving at normal speed, but, and not paying attention. But by raw, the way disadvantage works is you only apply advantage or disadvantage once. If it's a disadvantage, I mean, unless you have to house rule additional disadvantage for the, to really... Well, there, there, are, there are things for, you know, the, those specific conditions. But, like, the DM didn't feel that it was worth getting into. She's like, I'm just not going to deal with this. Mm -hmm. Like... And I, and I asked numerous times, I'm like, do you do you want me to change characters? Do you want me to not take this? Like, I didn't make it to break the game. I made it because those things made sense for that particular character. Then you do is you just throw things at them that have the ability where, like... False like, appearance. False appearance ability, and, yeah. And there was a little bit of that in the game. Mm -hmm. And I'm certain that there are some players like, but look at this. I'm like, no, that's... Did like, you have I, a learner's? I don't know whether I eventually took that as well. That, but that that's like the capstone on breaking that, that build. That, yeah. that that definitely is the next bit because then it's like, all right, you've already got a high deck score because I was playing a, an archer. You you, to, you toss on alertness up. I can't be surprised. Well, what it does, yeah, what it does is you just can't be surprised. So for the false appearance, it kind of doesn't negate it, but it doesn't affect you the way it's going to affect the yeah, rest. It's so, just like that's like, cute. I'm going to take my turn now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll roll initiative we'll, and yeah, work we'll it see, out. We'll see what goes on. I'm <laughs> probably going to win, by the way. <laughs> because you've got that plus five, the high decks. You know, it's good. I even feel like too though, what I as a, a GM, unless the character was blatantly not paying attention with us with disadvantage, I feel like a thirty DC see if that's the highest in that game yeah that statue just slightly moved twitched a little bit you might want to do something. Yeah, 30 is is like ungodly like nothing can mess with you that's like and seeing invisibility and that was and it was essentially one of the one of the correlations that we we had made and my passive investigate which is only ever mentioned under the observant feat as you know almost as high yeah. But because it was based off of intelligence, the, rather, intelligence than rather than wisdom, yeah. it was crazy. Going off of what you had said about alertness, that kind of is another kind of sort of broken combination. So if you take a bard with alertness, because they get half their proficiency mod to initiative, you stack that with, with initiative and a good dex, or with alertness and a good dex, you can have a initiative modifier in the double digits. Yeah, plus fifteen. If you know, if you have a twenty level character, if they get half oh well, half their proficiency. Half. So, so twenty twenty dex alertness, you can get up to a thirteen. Well, when you consider you can't roll less than a one, and that's a fourteen. 
So it's like, you know, it's almost like you're going to go 70 first 75 percent of the time. So. <laughs> Indeed. So like. And then yeah. if you play, if that if, that's only if you roll ones, and and if that bard <laughs> happens to be a halfling, they get to re-roll it. Oh uh, yeah, uh, that that would make it even more ridiculous. Yeah. So yeah, I think that would be yeah definitely a, a messed up combination. And I know you were talking about a a double class build. Yeah. So if if you do a combination of warlock and sorcerer, which happens yeah. to work out because they're both charisma. charisma based. Yep. Not having running into any problems there. Uh, we we kind of haggled over like two levels of warlock or three, no, two, le- two levels of five. Yeah, well, well, even three, three. is significant yeah. too. Two or three because we did want all the invocations. Oh. If we go to, to fifth level for warlock, you can do all the alterations on your Eldritch blast mm-hmm. to make it super awesome with the Eldritch spear, the double the distance. There's the one that knocks enemies back, repelling blast, repelling blast, and then there's also. Agonizing Blast, I believe, is the one that adds your Charisma modifier. You're at least going to want the one uh, Eldritch Spear and Agonizing Blast because you're going to max out Charisma, may as well really make it hurt. Mm -hmm. Now, you take Spell Sniper, so it goes from, I think, 150 to 300 uh, when you take Eldritch Spear. Then you take Spell Sniper, which is going to the double 600. 600 feet. Now... As a sorcerer, as a sorcerer, you can also do Distance Spell, which Mm -hmm. is going to double again. So... 1200 feet out you can ping people so the kicker would be is if you take the the, the um the repelling blast to push them another 10 feet insult injury so pew, push them a little bit like out from uh, like a mile away like ridiculousness yeah not quite quarter a mile, mile but, you know. <laughs> it's it, it's it's pretty that's pretty nasty and then uh on top of that your combination with your warlock and your sorcerer if you're getting sufficient short rest which while you're pushing people from a uh, thousand over a thousand feet away you have time to probably take some some rest and sack out some spells here and there and you're be able to convert those warlock spell slots that you're probably barely going to use anyway into more sorcery points that's the other place so you know the the crux of the matter is two three or five and we're, what you're we're talking about there is how many invocations do you want? Do you want to get the two or the three? Do you want to get the pack boon, which, you know... Pack to the home for Sorcerer? Super awesome. It's going it, to be very it, useful. It's good. If you're focusing on just the Eldritch Blast, you don't necessarily need to go with... Yeah, but it gives your character another dimension. That's true. So, but here's the other thing, right? You have to look at what, at what levels... Do the spell does the spell level increase for the warlock because th- this is really important because that's how many sorcery points you're going to be able to get back for for sacrificing it out. If yeah. you go to fifth level, your spell slots become third. Yeah. So and what at what level do they go to second? Uh, third. Yeah. Third. So third, that extra third level is really a appetizing. More, more optimized. Fifth, if you really want to double down the invocations, I could even see things in the in the feats the way you have feats that give you like a taste of another class. I could absolutely see a feat that gives you an invocation and maybe like a warlock spell. So it's kind of like you're contracted. You're you're a temp hire for a fey a fey power or some other uh, you know being. Well, the other thing too that have, will end up happening that's kind of interesting is it, it expands your spell list. Yeah, as being sor- able to be a ritual caster as as a sorcerer is huge. Well, no, I mean, even just the uh, your your warlock spells become spells you can use your, any spell slot for. Mm. So that that's the other thing. It just, it, it'll expand your repertoire that way too. So there, there's numerous ways where that build is kind of interesting and, and has broken capabilities. But as an addendum, I will say in the dungeon, 1,200 feet, useless. Yeah. So there's so many circumstances where 1,200 feet is just going to be useless because you're like 800 behind beyond what you would have needed anyway. Yeah. Now this character is a natural-born awesome sailor to have ship-to-ship combat on, or mm-hmm. if you're in like a tower and pinging people from far away there. Like anything that you kind of are a defensive capability against things and, and aggressors. The that, army is approaching. Yeah, you just become an, Eld- an Eldric Blast Gatling gun. Yeah, and so we were talking about too with the idea of this build. Getting, if you do get up to t- two levels of Warlock and uh, 18th of, say, Chaos Sorcerer, or wild mage, wild magic sorcerer, uh, getting 18th level of the capability spell bombardment 
you take that with uh, with Warcaster, so this way you can cast the spell as a reaction. You get the spell bombardment at that extra die more frequently. So I think that's that's a good natural fit if you're going to go for that smaller dip of uh, of warlock. You know, El- Eldritch Spear's got a got a decent die of damage. So with spell bombardment being able to go off every every round, I mean just just having the off chance of getting an extra die on a cantrip. Your your twentieth twentieth level. That's that's five d ten worth of dice that you're shelling out every time you cast that cantrip. Okay, one of those doubles. Great. What do you guys think about uh, broken combinations? Have you encountered something else in your game? Put in the comments below. While you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Yeah, tweet at us. Tweet them at us over on Twitter at Nerdarchy. And you can also form a pact with us on Patreon. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.